second startup. My first startup was a event search engine, and I also worked as a machine ter learning tech lead at Facebook. Now I should probably call it AI tech lead. And my co-founder, she's a biologist in our team. She has a PhD from Stanford in bioengineering. So Janice rightfully so said, we're moving from age of data in biotech to age of analytics. And I think now is the time that we should start moving from analytics to generative AI. And what we mean by generative AI, the picture on the left is the abstract painting that I generated in a project that I did in 2018. That was the early days of the generative AI. So it's just basically an abstract painting that machine generates by looking at many paintings as well as many human pictures. On the right, you see the technology in 2023, you can just talk to it. You can say, and two dogs hugging a cat in front of a farmhouse, and it does it. And I, we think this is the future of biotech. When I saw this technology in 2018, I said, this is the most transformative tools that I've seen in my life. And I said, what is the right place we should apply it to? And it took me three years of looking at many, many, many different areas. And at the end, I came to the conclusion that the most impactful and probably the most profitable space we can apply this to are these 3D robots. These are large molecules, consists of smaller molecules, something between 50 to a few thousand of smaller molecules. There is a subcategory of large molecules called proteins for people who are not from large background. They have a 3D structure, and you can think of them as nanorobots that do every function inside of your cell. You have 40 million of these things inside every single cell you have, and tens of thousands of types of them. You might think, okay, why would I care for designing RAM nanorobots inside body that they do stuff in my body as they invest? This is already the largest category of Therapeutics, $400 million in year 2022, and the fastest growing five out of 10 most uh, top selling drugs in US were protein based. This is a large category, but the thing is, it's very hard to design these things until now. So, going back, the, this field, it, it's a very, it's a very hard, hard field to design this. Projects. They take between 10 to 20 years and it's very expensive. You just mentioned $2.1 billion in average. That's the cost of getting one of these proteins into market. We think this has to become computational and then it has to become generative AI. We think if you talk to AI and you say two dogs hugging a cat in front of a farmer, we expect the picture on the left to be the answer. But we think the status of the biotech is somewhat like the picture on the right. It's very fragmented, it's not cohesive, it's not accurate, and it actually does not do what you describe it to do. So, we think the industry is moving to generative AI, and we think the business is also building. So over the last few years, we see the partnerships, we see the drug discovery is becoming two parts. There's the AI and there's the computational part. We should probably call it more computational part. And we see there's a company that is expert in the computational part, and then there's another company that takes the drug into the market. So this is one type of the contract, one example, $1.9 billion between Amgen and Jared Bio. That Jared Bio do, does the design of the protein and Amgen takes to the market. There are more and more of these contracts every year. There was a contract between Amazon and Johnson & Johnson last year for a cancer drug. We, we, we see these contracts growing both in terms of numbers and in terms of the size. We think these numbers should be much bigger than 1.9 billion. If you look at the Mer if you look at K2, the uh, cancer therapeutics that Merck sold last year, 2022, they had 21 billion dollar revenue. We think because the main IP is in the design of the protein, the number on the left should be much larger if we can actually design it. Why do you think this is the right time? Going back in 2018, and actually going back to 2017, there was a paper, the transformer that I think everybody who's in AI heard about it. That's the foundation of the uh, everything that OpenAI has done, ChatGPT, everything that you heard about it. 
Since then, the AlphaFold came in. The AlphaFold was a Google project. And after that, we see a massive growth in terms of computational and AI models for politics. Within the, I would say, three and a half reasons why this is the time. These proteins, in terms of shape of the data, they're very similar to human language. There are actually a bunch of words sitting next to each other, and you can analyze them, and you can generate them. With the same techniques that we do computer translation, when you do chat GPT, there's nothing different between the two. In terms of the transformer, they feel the transformers very well. Again, the same techniques. In terms of hardware, they actually feel in the GPUs better than human language, because human language can go up to if you want to analyze something right, you can go to tens of thousands of words at a time. But the proteins are very limited. Ninety-nine percent of the proteins they have le they have size of less than five thousand, so they fit very well into the hardware that they have. The last piece that I think everything comes down to this, and I think this is the biggest problem that biotech has that we have the solution for, is the data. And the question is, do we have enough data to solve this problem? Do we have enough data that talk to the machine? The same way that they paint, they can design these trigger structures. And we think that this is the hardest part about this thing. We think the answer to this question is advertising. If you think about the advertising, advertising ads in Google and Facebook are the largest AI teams in the world. Everybody now talks about ChatGPT, about OpenAI, but the ads team at Facebook and Google in particular. They are larger in terms of the model. They have more engineers, they have more scientists, and they have a deeper stack. And they have dealt with this problem. The problem is, this is when I worked at Facebook, everybody who saw me, the, the first thing that they tell me is, I think Facebook is listening to our conversation because every time I talk about like going to some trip, 30 seconds later I go to Instagram and I see the ads about the same trip. Like, how can we do this? And what I tell them is, no, Facebook does not listen to your conversation, doesn't even look at your text. The reason that happens is, when you look at many, many, many users and many, many, many contexts for each of them, you can find patterns that are very invisible to even your own brain about yourself. This is what we're bringing to protein design. We think those are the, the orange blocks for how biotech look at this problem. The way biotech looks at AI is, they define a problem and they narrow down their protein, they narrow down the molecules, and they narrow down the context that they look at protein to a small that they call this as an AI problem. This is built on AI. Right? AI needs a lot of data about many samples and many contexts per sample. This is exactly the opposite of how biotech works today. We think we look at all the proteins and we look at all their functions and all their contexts. So as you said, okay, this is great, what have you done? So before we started, the, the largest model that was actually designing protein could take up to five words. We started, so we don't go from five to 10 to 20 to 100. We started every word that you can find in any literature, any database. We built our own proprietary language of 220,000 biology keywords that describes the protein and large molecules. And we change this over 34 million sequences that are in public databases. And we started training the same thing that we do with ChatGPT, the same techniques that OpenAI that we just built for proteins. And this is the result. It actually works 72% of the time. It gets a structure. It means that the, bio, the biology tends to it has a TM score of more than 0.5. It means if you train this in nature for 100 million of years of evolution, you get to the very similar structure. And this was actually uh, part of the NVIDIA keynotes uh, in uh, March. They showed us as the future of AI technologies. We uh, got a very lot of from Merck to use this for, as part of their foundational model for next protein design. We are talking to Temo Fisher about designing gene therapy capsule using this technology. And we think this is going to make the whole tractor industry much faster, much cheaper, way more accurate. And the part, the fourth part that is way more interesting, more exciting to me than uh, all these three, is it opens the door to a whole new categories of 3D structures that the biology just didn't have time to go there. So we got used to the fact that, oh, if you're a certain age, X, Y, and Z happens to be at that life. 
The thing in that slide is because the biology did not have the right incentive and enough time to, deal, to design these structures for you. Now we have enough compute to do that, and that's the most exciting thing for me. Yeah, thank you.